Good morning. In keeping with our Spiritual Science Day, which is celebrated each August on the second Sunday, I'd like to share with you the extraordinary life of spiritualist and physicist Sir Oliver Lodge. And the title of my talk is Sir Oliver Lodge, Champion of the Ether. So in the early 20th century, when movers and shakers in the physics world were abandoning Lodge's theory of the uh, ether of space for another physicist, Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, Lodge stridently defended his ether theory, even though it was causing uh, his professional reputation to be damaged, because at that time he was considered to be on the losing side. But in spite of his reputation being questioned in scientific circles, the general public loved Sir Oliver Lodge, and he was the scientific go-to person because he would explain science in layperson's terms. And also at that time, the uh, emerging uh, industry of wireless communication was starting to evolve that would eventually become the British Broadcasting uh, Corporation and the theory of ether supported uh, radio, the idea of radio waves and uh, nowadays it's come back full circle with quantum field and all of that and uh, the technology that we use today all uh, uses Sir Oliver Lodge's theory uh, to make our lives very convenient. So that is why I titled this talk, Sir Oliver Lodge, Champion of the Ether. So what is the ether and who was Sir Oliver Lodge? Well, let's start with the ether. The ether is a wave-bearing medium that fills all space, also known as the quantum field or the Akasha, like the Akashic record, uh, dark energy, spirit, or in Star Wars terminology, the force. So the ether is also considered by many to be where the world of spirit and consciousness resides. While we can't sense ether directly, we experience its phenomena daily. Uh, cell phone, TV, radio, uh, wireless internet signals are all transmitted as waves through the ether. Even that uh, touchless uh, thermometer that we use these days, that's picking up infrared waves through the ether and translating them into a temperature. And also, the development and application of Sir Oliver Lodge's beloved ether theory is why we are able to be here today in this virtual fashion. So let me introduce you to Sir Oliver Lodge. He was born in Victorian England in 1951, and he was a brilliant physicist and writer who investigated many seemingly diverse fields radio, electromagnetism, chemistry, psychical research, and spiritualism, and wrote over 40 books based on his investigations. All his research had one thing in common, his beloved ether. He did not set out to prove consciousness survival. It arose out of his scientific interests. In his early years, uh, he was born the oldest of nine children in a rural village outside of Birmingham, which is 90 miles northwest of London. His father was a clay merchant in the emerging uh, pottery industries in that area. And while, Oj while Lodge was attending grammar school, he visited London and attended several lectures on scientific topics, which piqued his interest in science. And at age 12, he set upon creating his own workshop so he could do experiments during his long school holidays. And when he turned 20, when he turned 14, he had to leave school to join his father in his father's business, which became very prosperous as a result of the booming economy at that time. And at 16, he returned to school uh, in night school, and it became apparent that he excelled in scientific topics. So his father gave up the idea of having his firstborn son be in business with him, and Lodge was allowed to pursue a career in science. At the age of 21, Lodge began his university training and obtained his bachelor's and doctoral in physics at the University of London. And it was during this time that he corresponded with and attended lectures by James Clerk Maxwell, a Scottish physicist who demonstrated theoretically through mathematics that light, electricity, and magnetism were all the same thing, aspects of the same thing, electromagnetic radiation, which was a novel concept at that time. In 1877, at the age of 26, Lodge married Mary Marshall and in the following year began to have the first of his 12 children, which spanned over a 20-year period. And 
in the 20th century, he had his own home circle, 12 children plus his wife. So he had like a, your own soccer team. Well, he had his own home circle and you'll that'll uh, play into my talk in a little while. Thus began his career in academia. You know, he had to take this position at the university he was uh, studying at to support his family. And then right after that, he was invited to become the chair of the physics department in the newly established university in Liverpool. And he continued in that position for 10 years. In 1883, as a well-established, classically trained scientist, Lodge brought science to the seance room when he was invited to investigate mediumship by the newly formed Society for Psychical Research. And at the same time, he met fellow physicist Heinrich Hertz, who was also conducting experiments with electromagnetic waves. They became fast friends, and at Lodge's invitation, Hertz also joined the Society for Psychical Research. And as a result of his personal experiences with that society, Lodge became convinced that psychic phenomena was indeed a part of natural law and should be scientifically investigated. And I want to make a note here at this time. This is 1883. Lodge wrote a book in 1916 about the death of his son called Raymond. And a lot of uh, debunkers would like to say that Lodge became a spiritualist at the death of his son. But that's not true. This is like... 30 years before that time. So just make a note of that because when people try and uh, discredit spiritualism, they often are not quoting the facts correctly. And that's why it's really important for us to know our history. So here's a fun one. In the late 1880s, Lodge was studying lightning, going out in the field in a rubber suit, playing around with lightning because he wanted to make a better lightning rod. And radio was the byproduct of those experiments. During a series of public demonstrations on lightning, he realized that he could create what turned out to be radio signals, which were electronic, electromagnetic waves, the same as light, but of a lower frequency. And in 1894, in a lecture on the work of Hertz, who had recently met an untimely death, Lodge made the first public demonstration of broadcasting radio signals at Oxford University. Lodge's experiments took place one year before another radio pioneer, Marconi, publicly demonstrated his version of broadcasting radio signals. And needless to say, a series of patent disputes followed. So in 1900, after spending 10 years at the university in uh, Liverpool, Lodge left Liverpool to become the first principal of the new Birmingham College, a role he served in until his retirement 20 years later. So this new university in Liverpool and the new university in Birmingham were meant to bring science to everyday people rather than just folks that belong to royal societies. So this was really important because Lodge was getting known as an applied scientist person, a person who shared science with every walk of uh, people and he could explain science in layperson's terms. And in 1902, at the age of 51, right after he got appointed as the first principal of the new college in Birmingham, he was knighted by King, not King Edward, yeah, King Edward, yeah, Edwardian period. He was knighted by King Edward. Um, at the same time, he was serving as president of the Society for Psychical Research. So he's an established scientist, an academician, and he's involved in psychical paranormal research. So once he was established in his career in academia, uh, Lodge turned his attention to business and started to apply uh, some of his discoveries in electromagnetic radiation to businesses. In 1901, he teamed up with electrical engineer Alexander Muirhead and went on to patent several inventions related to radio communication. Together, they uh, developed commercial applications for Lodge's discoveries that enabled the birth of the BBC, the British Broadcasting uh, Corporation I mentioned earlier, and successfully manufacture, manufactured radio equipment for several years. Now, Lodge being Lodge, he also wanted to do a project that attempted to contact Spirit using radio, but his business partner, Muirhead, would have none of that. And in 1911, Marconi uh, approached their company and bought out those patents, so those patents, so the partnership was dissolved. Now, 
Another application of electromagnetic radiation that Lodge uh, developed into a business was the spark plug. He made a major contribution to the automotive industry by creating and inventing a spark plug for the internal combustion engine that was run on a new material at that time, gasoline. Before that time, the engines were steam powered and they, were, um, they used coal or charcoal to create the heat to create the steam. So this was a major accomplishment in uh, the Industrial Revolution. And his, uh, two of his sons went on to develop his invention into a successful business, Lodge Plugs LTD. So as he is established in academia, established in business, in 1904 he starts to write about science and spiritualism in the same context. And in 1909 he wrote two books, one in March and one in November. The first book was called The Ether of Space, and that was a scientific perspective that bridged the gap between the physical and spiritual or etheric worlds. And in November of the same year, he wrote Survival of Man, which is a tribute to his associate in the Society for Psychical Research, uh, um, Frederick Myers. And it's a spiritual perspective based on his 26-year scientific investigation with that society. And he expressed his belief that life after death had indeed been demonstrated by mediumship. So on a little side note, as a spiritualist Christian, as a, a Christian spiritualist, Lodge hypothesized that the biblical account of the re resurrection referred to Christ's etheric body becoming visible to the disciples after the crucifixion. There he is applying science. He's just like a schoolboy. I love this guy. Um, so Lodge's work with electromagnetic radi radiation convinced him that an etheric field existed throughout the universe and believed that spirit world resided there. In 1910, after publishing The Survival of Man, Lodge became a prominent spiritualist leader advocating consciousness survival proven through mediumship. His progressively outspoken spiritualist views drew criticism from many of his scientific peers, yet secretly, Physicists including Heinrich Hertz and Max Planck privately expressed their keen interest in Lodge's unorthodox investigations into the paranormal. That goes on today. And in 1913, never mind his fascination with spiritualism and how he was beginning to get criticized for that, he was elected president of the British Association for the Advancement of Science. Only Oliver Lodge could pull this off, in my humble opinion. And just when everything was going well, World War I reared its ugly head. And in a shell-shocked Britain, few families escaped the experience of loss. The grieving process became a national experience so widely felt that suddenly spiritualism found a large and ready audience. And in August 1915, Lodge, who continued his investigations into mediumship, received more proof of survival through medium Lenora Piper when she relayed convincing messages from two of his associates from the Society for Psychical Research, uh, Myers and Edmund Gurney. So this dramatic assurance of life in the spirit world I believe, helped Lodge prepare for the death of his youngest son, Raymond, who was a 26-year-old machine gun officer and was killed on September 14th in 1915, not even a month after his sitting with Lenora Piper. After hearing, the death, after hearing of the death of his son, Sir Oliver and Lady Lodge began to visit several mediums who brought through Raymond on numerous occasions, and Raymond gave detailed descriptions of the spirit world, meeting his father's friends, Meyer and Gurney, who had come through just the month before. In 1916, Lodge wrote his hugely popular book that I spoke about earlier, Raymond or Life and Death, which became a spiritualist classic. Lodge in that book, Lodge shows his schoolboy enthusiasm and excitement in describing the details of communication with his son and spirit through the various mediums and through his own home circle, the one I mentioned earlier. And if World War I wasn't enough, in 1918, a pandemic appeared that rocked the world right at the same time the war was going on. Now, do you know why it's called the Spanish flu? 
Well, it, it didn't start in Spain, that's for sure. It started, from what I understand, in Fort Riley, Kansas in March of 1918. But due to the war effort, a quarantine was not considered an option, and the outbreak of the epidemic was not reported due to wartime censorship. So the deadly flu spread across the globe through the deployment of U.S. troops. And by the time the flu hit Spain in November, it was actually allowed to be publicly shared because Spain was neutral in that war. And that's why it's called the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu came to an end in the summer of 1919, right around the same time World War I ended. So guess what? Playing down pandemics is nothing new. So after all of this, you know, losing his son, experiencing the war, having to deal with the pandemic as we we're getting, you know, kind of realizing what that might have been like, Lodge uh, in 1920, at the age of 69, retired, left the city life and moved to a beautiful old farmhouse uh, in the Salisbury Plain area near Stonehenge. But he continued to write uh, books and whatnot uh, and give public appearances until his 80s. But um, something interesting, um, the book 30 Years of Psychical Research, which was published in 1923 by a fellow psychical research, S Society for Psychical Research member, uh, Nobel laureate Charles Riche, in that book, Riche concluded that Sir Oliver Lodge's scientific accounts of seances were of the highest quality, calling them the standard for reporting psychical phenomenon. And while Riche drew a different conclusion as to the cause, he thought it was telepathy rather than uh, communication across the veil, he felt that the phenomena had indeed been proven to exist and that belief in the paranormal would someday become a widely accepted scientific fact. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Things are starting to shift. Um, and in August of 1940, Sir Oliver Lodge transitioned peacefully to spirit at the age of 89. Now, you would think that would be the last that we would hear from somebody, but no, this is Sir Oliver Lodge. And true to his uh, curious nature, he came through uh, mediums. The first one was Leslie Flint in 1963, and again during the Skull Experiments in the 1990s. And he tells us through both of them, people might wonder why I come back to talk through a medium as I am now. It's because I'm still involved in and curious about life. And he goes on to talk about the mechanics of mediumship and from the spirit side of things and being a part of a team of scientists in the spiritual realm. And he wants us to know he retains his view that he had on Earth, amazed that anyone who investigates psychic phenomena could not realize that God is behind it all. So in closing, scientist, spiritualist, scientist and spiritualist Sir Oliver Lodge was well-versed in the most important leading-edge physics of his time and dared to speak publicly about his conclusion that the spirit realm did in fact exist. He possessed the charisma, peer respect, and status to cause scientific investigations into the paranormal to be taken seriously by his contemporaries. He put his grief over the loss of his son into action by sharing with the world in his book Raymond that we don't die and we can continue to communicate with our loved ones across the veil. And on a personal note, during the first epidemic pandemic of my life, AIDS, as a community, we learned to put our grief over our loved ones into action by performing simple yet helpful acts. Grocery shopping for the infirmed, um, volunteering at food banks, doing hospice work, sitting with our dying friends in their last hours. You know, it's just, how do you express your grief? You put it into action, and that's what Lodge showed us in his book, uh, Raymond. So I encourage you, as we slowly begin to face our collective grief over this most recent pandemic, as spiritualists, we have the tools to adapt and to lead by example to help others. So if you ever thought about it, rather than remaining uh, hopeless and in grief, put it into action by taking advantage of what we do have right now, including time and the internet. Find a spiritualist topic of interest like I have, 
and become immersed in it. Learn about spiritualism. It's a science and philosophy besides a religion, and it's very, very applicable these days. Uh, develop your spiritual potential by participating in online spirit circles. For example, celebrate life's uh, mediumship circle and seance circle continue uh, via Zoom. And consider starting a family home circle to sit in the power of our souls in silence and to tune into the frequency of love using Sir Oliver Lodge's beloved ether. Sir Oliver Lodge, champion of the ether, thank you for having the courage and conviction to put your reputation on the line and speak your truth regardless of others' opinions. Thank you for showing us how to be curious and to find joy in the most challenging of situations. It is my hope that by honoring you, others may be inspired as I have been to find joy, be curious, and live life to its fullest. Thank you.